All right, so I spent the majority of the afternoon, morning to early afternoon, till about 2 o'clock, working on the hearts. So this... These are the ones, and this is from Janice. Isn't that lovely? And let's see what else did I work on. Oh, with the blue one. And I worked on this one. The orange, pink, I don't know, whatever it is. It's a disaster. Um, also this one, which I think this one might be my favorite one because it's a piece of dyed, kind of funny feeling paper. And... I was able to put the heart right so I could get the pattern. And then the back is just the dyed from the other side. I really like that one. Then I decided that I needed more. So I took some jelly prints out of the drawer. And I made uh, more hearts out of some jelly prints. There's that one. Then there's this one. very light on the back. It's, a, I think, a ghost print for this one right here, which is the exact same stamp as the hearts, just in a different color, done a different way. Then I did this, which were from stamps that I carved this year at Card December. And this one is out of my doodle book where I photocopied the page and it made lines in the photocopy but I don't really care not for this and this is where they're going to live so there is my bowl of hearts it's a very cute project, and it's a good way to use up old plastic bags. Now, I say plastic bags from the grocery store because I have a cat, and I dispose of litter box items in those plastic bags. This is a bowl I made in a past video. Anyway, so this is where my hearts are going to stay. And I might do a couple more because I would like for it to have be a little more full than this. So there they all are. I hope that you guys do this project. Let me let me just interject this. I cannot find that woman's um, short reel video, whatever it was I saw. I've looked everywhere I can think of. So I went to Pinterest, and sure enough, all you have to do is write in stuffed paper heart, and you will get a plethora of ways to do this, different stitching. And then there, if there's not enough paper ones, then they start interjecting the ones made out of material where people have done them with material. So there are other places to find that. I'm sorry, I cannot find her video because I would love to give her credit because she's the reason this whole video came about. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and you go try to make some of these plastic bag stuffed hearts. Um, one other thing, let me say, that I found that using this and just doing every, you know, trying to space it out evenly worked out much better than the ones that are spread out far apart. I think it looks nicer when they're closer together than they're so spread out. The threads don't sit up higher on the edge if they're so spread out, but still, it, it's fine. It's just that um, that's just an observation I had from doing them when I did them so close together. I think the stitching looks better a little closer together. All right, so that's it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I appreciate your subscriptions. Bye. I went and looked at my cart where I put my Sizzix Big Shot and some of my thinlets on it. This is how I store some of them. They're on magnets. Um, so I went through these looking. I knew I had a heart thinlet somewhere. And ta-da, there it is. And I, there used to be smaller hearts than this in there. I oh, know, sorry, it's black and it's hard to see it. Um, but, well, let's see if I can get it out. Urgh. 
there used to be at least two more hearts in here and I think I allocated them to another project. So because I don't want to turn my machine on, I'm going to see if I can make this work this way. I really need the bigger heart because it's not going to work otherwise. And yes, I realize that the, the back of the envelope is sealed shut. So I think I'm going to do it like this. And then I'll do this side because I want to capture as most um, as much of it as I can. Although I do like I like all of this here. OK, um, so let me flip it over and do it this way. I'm going to trace it. I'm not cutting it out from a machine. I'm going to do this from hand because a lot, of, a lot of people don't have machines and I'm going to show you the way the other lady did it. She, I think she traced hearts on hers, but she stamped. Well, I'll show you. The, I'll tell you about it. She had a brown paper bag and she stamped randomly these nice black um, uh, designs. And then she took her heart and she traced it around different things. Well, my design is already there. I don't have to stamp anything because Janice did all the work for me. Yay. And then, let's see. It doesn't matter where I put this. It's still going to be cool. So I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to cut these out. Let's see if I can keep this straight. Whoops, nope. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut these out. I hate to waste good, good designs, good doodle things. I thought this would make something really cute out of Janice's envelope. I just want to give a disclaimer that this is lawnmower season. So in the videos from now on till it gets too cold to mow, you're going to probably hear a mower in the background <laughs> because I live in the country and people mow at like, you know, 7 a.m. or they mow at 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night because it's still light out in the summer. So you know, I'm going to continue to record despite their need to go. <laughs> mow their grass while I'm filming. I know they don't know I'm filming, but it is annoying to have all that background noise, but it's just the way it is when you live out in the country and everybody's a farmer. Okay, so I have little bits left over. All right, this is what she did. She took the two pieces. Let me put this this way because this has got the flap on it. Let me glue this down real quick before I do something that'll cause it not to work. So I'm going to put that on there. I don't know what kind of pen she used. I shouldn't be smearing glue on it. Let me see. Okay, uh, where did I put the pen? I know it's on the table somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to look back at the video. Oh, look, there's the pen. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to take these two. You push them to you put them together. Wait, where's the glue? Is it not coming out? Okay. There it is right there. I'm going to take the, um, the two hearts, put them together, and then I'm going to show you a very interesting tool. One's a little bigger than the other, but it'll be fine. Let me go get the tool. It took me a couple seconds to remember where I put these. These are tools for poking holes in leather. And they are different amounts of holes. You have one, two, three, and then I think it's five. They go like this. And what you do is you stick it on the lever and you give it a whack and it pokes a nice hole in it. But I think I'm going to use this on uh, the paper. I'm going to use the two. Let's see, I need a surface in which to do this on that will not wake the dead. Uh. <laughs> Let me go find some foam. 
I don't know what I did with the phone that I used for my Artemat stuff because I cleaned off my desk yesterday, but I can't find it. So I had to get a fresh piece. All right, so all you have to do is take it and poke it and it makes little teeny holes for you in the edge of the paper. I think I made it too close to the edge, but we shall see. This is an experiment. It's working. Look at that. I got holes on. See those on both sides. So now the, they are kind of attached to each other. Let's see, let's go this way. Where's that other hole? There's these. There we go. So you just kind of follow the contour of the item that you cut out. The other lady's um, tool what had the um, these spread out further. These are very small, but they're really useful. I didn't think I'd ever be poking paper with them. Okay, it's kind of hard to see these in this design. It's a nice sunshiny day outside, but my back is to the window, so I don't get to see a lot of the sun here in the video. Well, that's going better when it's not the dark spaces. Okay, let's go here, and then we turn. So for this portion of the video, I'm going to fast forward through the rest of it, then I'll move on to the next part. My craft closet is called the, clo the, the Closet of Lost Treasures. <laughs> so I bought this set of thread off of Amazon and it is lovely thread. So I think I'm going to use this. This is, uh, I want to liken it to DMC number, I don't know, five, something to that effect. But I got a lot of colors in there and I think I'm going to use the red one for today. And don't, any of you who know me, please don't faint. You know how I detest sewing. <laughs> so this really is a labor of love. Because I hate to sew. Where's the end? Here it is. Nope, that is not the right end. Okay, here it is. Um, so I'm going to pull this off. And I think I'm going to double the thread. Because I'm not really sure how this is going to go. Like I said, I saw this idea my first time doing it so sorry Janice <laughs> all right so I gotta get a needle out of here these are this this is um, one of those tins that you can buy it uh, I get the got these at Michael's when they had them on sale and I saw an idea how to make it a needle box these are usually my book binding needles I have sewing needles in, in another holder that somebody else gave to me all right is this sharp yeah Ooh, yeah okay <laughs> I'm not used to super sharp needles because that's not what I use when I bind books all the time. All right. Well, I have to say these are not as sharp as regular sewing needles. And so here we are starting off <laughs> with a mess. <laughs> Poo. <laughs> e okay, don't be surprised if I fast forward through this part. Or turn the camera off and start all
Okay, so I have tried numerous times to um, thread this, and I thought, well, it's my eyes. No, what it is is that I use these for book binding, and there is wax inside the eye of the needle. So I'm hoping, aha, uh -huh, that poking it with a straight pin will help it. Yes, and now I'm going to kind of wiggle this thread through the eye of the needle hoping that I can get some of that wax out of there. This is why you don't use <laughs> book binding needles to do your sewing. Okay, so here I thought I had this all entangled and darned if I didn't get it tangled up again. Oh my word. Did I mention how much I hate to sew? <laughs> this is precisely why. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, well... Oh, good grief. All right, here we go. Finally, the end. All right, let me stretch this out to make sure I can do this because this looks a little sketchy. With the thread being so long, I thought maybe I would only have to thread this once because I made it so long, but maybe twice would have been just fine because then I wouldn't be fiddling around with it this long. All right, I'm going to stick. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to... Nope, I'm not. <laughs> Let me do it on this side. For Pete's sake. I'm going to put this here so I can hide my neat, my knot inside the creation. And it won't matter later. So all you're going to do is you're just going to go in and out as soon as you find the holes. <laughs> oh my god. And, oh my gosh, I finally got one. <laughs> For pity's sake. Uh, and see, the thing is, I cannot see this because I have my light turned away from where I'm looking. So that you guys won't be blinded by the light, but then I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, look at this. Maybe one thickness of the thread would have been enough. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Alright, so I think I'm going to have to look at the back side of the... I'm going to have to look at the back side of the paper to find where the holes are. Nope, that's the wrong way to do it. So, back we go. And now we split the thread. <laughs> Alrighty, this just is not going the way I thought it was going to go. <laughs> um... Let's try it this way. I can't even remember how I did the first stitch. Oh, that wasn't it, I don't think. Oh, maybe it was. I don't know. Oh, maybe it was. <laughs> and you can't pull too tight because this is just paper. It's not material where you can give it a good tug and know that it's going to be fine. Well, I, was, I wonder if I skipped a hole. Well, we'll see. See, it's because of this the zentangle on it. 
the the design on it it's a little hard to see where the holes whoops where the holes are okay by the time I get down to the last stitch I have a feeling I will have perfected the technique <laughs> let me fast forward through this mess <laughs> Okay, so I got it all the way around, tied a knot, and pulled a little thing on here, but maybe I can fix that. But look at that, all that, all that thread I use, and I still need more. It's the darndest thing. Okay, so the part that excites me the most about this is you, that this is a stuffed heart. And you do not use fiber fill, you use a plastic bag. So I'm going to take a plastic bag, and I'm going to find some skizzers. I'm going to cut it because I think this might be a little too large for the size heart that I used. And I want to um, do small portions in it. I don't want to overstuff it and then bust the whole project. So I'm going to take and cut up little pieces and stuff it in there. So this is what I saw her do. She took the plastic bag. And then she filled the heart. Now her bag, I mean her paper, was a brown paper bag, which was more sturdy than an envelope. But, oh man, that's so cool. Look at that already. Let me cut the handle. You might not have to cut. I don't remember she cut hers, but I'm cutting mine because my paper is not as sturdy as hers. And then she just pushed it all up in there. There's the handle. I need a little more stuffing. I want it to be a little more poofy, so that means I have to stuff a little more in there without ripping the stitches out. Nope, not enough. But you also have to leave enough room in there because you still have to close the heart. And when you close it, it'll look a little more puffy than you think it will. Okay, so I'm going to need a little more to fill this in and then I still have to stitch it shut. This is what's left of the original bag. So I think I've used uh, half of it. I 
pink it needs to be snug against the stitching but not too snug it pops and she only stuffed it in there with her finger so no special tools needed get a whole plastic bag in there depending on how large your heart is. And then you have, I guess you have to manipulate it down close to where it is you stitch it, stitch it shut. towards the end here. I guess you have to play around with it. I don't know. All right. I think I'm going to put more of the plastic bag in. See, we're whittling it down. I have more. <laughs> it got to me. It got me thinking about this one, puffy heart. Uh, yes, I have light on here, and there's shadows. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, and so I decided that I have drawers and drawers full of paper that I've dyed and doodled and jelly printed. And how silly of me not to use this paper. So I found this with this beautiful design here. So. I'm going to take this paper, fold it in half, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I'm going to stick this in the corner. I would like it to be more like that, but, or maybe I should do it like this. Although I would be missing, no, nope. don't change your mind, stick to your guns, Annie. Okay, so let's see. Let's, uh, where is it? I put it away. I could run this through the machine, but honestly, I'm, I don't want to get up. <laughs> Oops. Let's do it down this way, see if we got it all there. Yeah, it's good enough. So... That's design number one. Then I looked at my jelly prints and I decided that I would like to use some jelly prints. So instead of having the same thing on both sides, this one will be the print, this one will just be the dyed side. Um, I decided that I will use jelly prints and do one jelly print on one side and one jelly print on the other. This is a really good way to use up prints that you haven't used, don't think about using, not nearly often enough, and you keep making jelly prints and keep storing them away and never using them. So this is going to be the one that makes you use them, the project. And, woof, 
We barely made that on there. Holy cow. Well, let's see. Maybe this is not the right size for this one. Let's go down to the one I used before. So that way, there we go. It doesn't matter which way it goes. I just want to use some of this paper up. Alright, these two go together. Then I have these two, which are basically, I think they're the same stamp. No, not exactly, but I'm going to use them. Let's see. I might get a large one out of this. Let's do it on the small side. That way we're sure to get it. So these two I'm going to set aside. Oh yeah, this will work. Let me turn it on this side though. There we go. can see enough of that to cut it out. Then I have this one, which is um, one that I'm, I, I, it was red and yellow, and the Epson made it pink and yellow. And then there's a blot of black paint, so I can't use this, all of it. So this is what we're doing. We're going to use it this way. And then there's other little blotches there. It just made me crazy when I saw my print come out like that. I was not very happy. And does it matter which direction I do this, I'm still going to get some blotch of paint somewhere on both sides. Yep. Okay. So we'll do it this way, and I'll cut it on the... I'll put it on the edge here as best I can so I can get that blotch off of there. Uh, Nope. There we go. scoot it down a little bit further. See, I covered it up with this, but I moved it, I think. So let's do it like this. I don't want that blotch on there. It's on the back side, I don't care, but I don't want it on the front. There's a will, there's a creative way. <laughs> All right, so the darker line is where I need to cut. There we go. So I'll cut that. Maybe two pieces. There's that one. And then there's this one. This is the original. I did scan it, so I do have a photocopy. But you know what? Ta-da. We're going to use it up. All right, so this one... I will have to draw on the other side because of the colors and all that's going on on that side of the paper. I'm going to have to do it this way. So I'm going to do one this way. Then I'm going to do a second one this way. Oops. A 
lefty I am not, but you do what you gotta do. All right, so I can get two out of this, the front and the back, and this will be on the inside so no one will see all this printing. That's a good thing. Alrighty, so I'm gonna cut these out and sew these, and then I'm gonna come back and show you all of them all finished. All right, so I spent the majority of the afternoon, morning to early afternoon, till about 2 o'clock, working on the hearts. So this these are the ones and this is from Janice. Isn't that lovely? And let's see what else did I work on. Oh, with the blue one. And I worked on this one, the orange, pink, I don't know, whatever it is. It's a disaster. Um, also this one, which I think this one might be my favorite one because it's a piece of dyed, kind of funny feeling paper. And I was able to put the heart right so I could get the pattern. And then the back is just the dyed from the other side. I really like that one. Then I decided that I needed more. So... I took some jelly prints out of the drawer and I made uh, more hearts out of some jelly prints. There's that one. Then there's this one. It's very light on the back. It's, a, I think, a ghost print for this one right here, which is the exact same stamp as the hearts just in a different color, done a different way. Then I did this, which were from stamps that I carved this year at Card December. And this one is out of my doodle book where I photocopied the page and it made lines in the photocopy, but I don't really care, not for this. And this is where they're going to live. So there is my bowl of hearts. It's a very cute project and it's a good way to use up old plastic bags. Now I say plastic bags from the grocery store because I have a cat and I dispose of litter box items in those plastic bags. This is a bowl I made in a past video. Anyway, so this is where my hearts are going to stay. And I might do a couple more because I would like for it to have be a little more full than this. So there they all are. I hope that you guys do this project. Let me let me just interject this. I cannot find that woman's um, short reel video, whatever it was I saw. I've looked everywhere I can think of. So I went to Pinterest and sure enough, all you have to do is write in stuffed paper heart. 
and you will get a plethora of ways to do this, different stitching. And then there, if there's not enough paper ones, then they start interjecting the ones made out of material where people have done them with material. So there are other places to find that. I'm sorry, I cannot find her video because I would love to give her credit because she's the reason this whole video came about. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and you go try to make some of these plastic bag stuffed hearts. Um, one other thing, let me say, that I found that using this and just doing every, you know, trying to space it out evenly worked out much better than the ones that are spread out far apart. I think it looks nicer when they're closer together than they're so spread out. The threads don't sit up higher on the edge if they're so spread out. But still, it, it's fine. It's just that um, that's just an observation I had from doing them when I did them so close together. I think the stitching looks better a little closer together. All right, so that's it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I appreciate your subscriptions. Bye.